Hi, uh, welcome to the session on inventory. Um, we discussed so far um, inventory, what is to be included in inventory, how the ownership uh, transfers from seller to the buyer, what are the terms which we use uh, to, be, to transfer the ownership from the seller to buyer, and when uh, what is the condition that how uh, ownership is you know not transferred under what circumstances the ownership is not transferred okay if the goods are um, uh, in transit depending upon the term we use in the contract the ownership and risk will be transferred this we discussed in the previous session FOB shipping point FOB destination goods sent on consignment to the consignee consignment to the consignee there will be an agent there will be an agent there will be a, a, a principal principal is called as consignor who is the owner of the goods and agent is called consignee consignee receives the goods from consignor which are to be sold on consignment basis okay so the ownership is still with the consignor. The owner is still the consignor, though goods are in position of consignee. Consignee received the goods, stores in his showroom, warehouse. He stores, goods are in his position, but ownership is still with the consignor. When consignee sells the goods to customer, the ultimate customer, final customer, then the ownership will be transferred directly from consignor to the customer. So consignee, say for example, received the goods for $150 per unit from consignor. He sells it to the customer at $200. So ownership is transferred directly from consignor to consignee, or sorry, customer. And consignee is holding $200 in his hand. Say for example, he gets 5% commission on the sales. So consignee will deduct $10, that is 5% of 200, and remits $190 to consignee, consignor. Okay, this is the relationship between consignor and consignee over consignment, a principal and agent relationship. Consignee works for only commission. Unsold goods can be sent back to consignor. The contract ends. But never the ownership will be transferred to consignee. So though the goods are with consignee, still the ownership is with the consignor sometimes goods may be sold under buyback agreements buyback agreements means the showroom say for example a showroom sells a product to the buyer 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 says that i want to i want to buy you know upgraded item when a new product is released from your showroom your company okay no issues say for example a sports bike a sports bike is purchased by the buyer for say five thousand dollars five thousand dollars if this buyer will enter into an agreement with the dealer saying that this bike i will use it for three years and I'll come back, hand over the bike to you. You have to give me new model bike. So there is an agreement between these two guys for the taking the uh, you know the product back and adjusting the amount. Say for example, an agreed amount is one thousand five hundred dollars. So this one thousand five hundred dollars will be adjusted against a new product after three years. Means this bike maintenance, you know, insurance, etc., are paid by the showroom itself whenever buyer uh, needs some maintenance he has to hand over it to the showroom they will maintain it it is like higher charges how much he is paying now five thousand he paid 
but you will get after three years 1500 so he is paying 3500 for usage of this vehicle for three years you can assume that way you can assume that way so under this method good the ownership is still with the dealer now the depending upon the you know terms we use in the contracts the ownership will be transferred and the risk as well say for example fob destination the term used in the in the contract include fob destination what does it mean the supplier has literally has to literally go to the customer place and deliver goods at a buyer's you know location so the risk entire risk involved in movement of the goods from supplier source to the de destination at buyer's place the risk is entire risk is to be borne by the seller whereas if you use a term called fob shipping point buyer has to move to the seller's place pick up the goods from seller's place and entire risk is to be borne by the buyer packing up loading insurance etc etc and he'll be responsible for any risk after once the goods are handed handed over to the buyer at seller's place so depending upon the situation depending upon the you know um, um, terms we use the ownership will be transferred inventory estimation when we inventory when your inventory is uh, sold or unsold so you had you have purchased purchased say 5000 worth of goods you sold 50% of the goods how much 50% of goods okay for say for example seven thousand dollars this is five thousand dollars fifty percent of the goods were sold for seven thousand and the remaining fifty percent is unsold fifty percent sold fifty percent unsold now see here your inventory at the end of the period reporting period is fifty percent of what you purchased all right so the remaining inventory in your warehouse will be 2500 out of 5000 50% is unsold the remaining 50% is sold here whose cost was $2500 this is a cost and this is a sale value the difference between sale value and cost of the sale is called GP this will go to income statement this portion this calculation will go to income statement the unsold goods at this period will be transferred to balance sheet to be sold in future and it is to be presented under current asset if you have any beginning inventory beginning inventory say for example three thousand dollars so three thousand dollars plus five thousand dollars eight thousand dollars fifty percent is sold 50% so calculation goes same way but you will have uh, uh, you know um, some in beginning inventory as well like we have ending inventory this period will become beginning inventory for next period same way you may have beginning inventory also so the calculation will go on like this this inventory was sold for 7000 50% of the total is 4000 deduct from here to get gross profit and the remaining 50% of 8000 is 4000 what I mean to say is if there is no beginning inventory calculations go as explained in the earlier if you have any beginning inventory the calculations will go in the same manner with 8000 amount now when we have beginning inventory purchases and a portion of which is sold will help us to calculate gross profit gross profit is the difference between sales uh, sorry beginning invent uh, sales and cost of goods sold and cost of goods sold is calculated with the help of a formula beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory 
beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory will give you gross profit this gross profit can be helpful in the calculation of gross profit margin as well gross profit over net sales times 100 will give you percentage of gross profit included on net sales say for example percentage of gross profit is 35 percent which means that for every hundred dollars of sale we have a profit of 35 percent gross profit of 35 percent means every hundred dollar of sale will give you a um, gross profit of 35 dollars which means the cost of cost of goods sold is only 65 means your your cost is 65 you are selling it for 100 making a profit of 35 dollars this is a cost this is sale and this is a profit gross profit now cost of goods sold equals to opening inventories plus purchases minus ending inventory so if cost of goods sold increases if cost of goods sold increases in the same formula what happens here if cost of goods sold increases sales minus cost of goods sold equals to gross profit if cost of goods sold increases gross profit will decrease if cost of goods sold decreases gross profit will increase so please make out two points here one if cost of goods sold increases gross profit will decrease net profit will decrease retail earnings will decrease ultimately equity will also decrease okay likewise cost of goods sold decreases all these amounts will also increase gross profit net profit retain earnings and equity important points please okay so the cost of goods sold will have an impact on gross profit net profit retain earnings and equity cost of goods sold is derived it is not a single you know amount it is derived from this formula so the value of cost of goods sold depends upon the valuation of opening inventory and closing inventory because anyway purchase value we consider whatever the amount of uh, you know expenses we incur on purchases that we can consider here but if any error takes place in opening inventory or closing inventory that will have an impact on cost of goods sold so cost of goods sold increase or decrease will have an impact on our amounts profits etc so the, these are called as inventory errors inventory errors and their impact will be on the income statement retain earning statement and of course on the statement of financial position okay so ending inventory now if you take an example of ending inventory ending inventory let's let me take only ending inventory okay say for example beginning inventory was 5000 yeah purchases say 20000 ending inventory 8000 so this has to be decreased isn't it beginning plus purchases minus ending inventory will give you cost of goods sold so what is the amount here 25 minus 8 17000 we sold goods for say 30,000. 30,000. 30,000 is a sale. So GP is going to be 30,000 minus 17,000. It is 13,000. Okay. This is your cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold is reduced from sales to get gross profit okay automatically you will be able to calculate net profit retain earnings and all and all now we are working on ending inventory 
if ending inventory is overvalued sales remain 30000 okay beginning inventory 5000 purchase is 20000 but ending inventory is 10000 it was not 8000 it is it is supposed to be 10000 so what is the cost of goods sold here cost of goods sold is 5 plus 20 25 minus 15000 ending inventory is overvalued ending inventory is overvalued cost of goods sold decreased and you are deducting it from the sales clear and here the gross profit is going to be 15000 increased if ending inventory is overvalued your gross profit net profit retained earnings and cash flow no, sorry the, the equity will increase so ending inventory undervalued gross profit decreases overvalued gross profit will increase now let us see the beginning inventory beginning inventory this is the say original data now let us compare with the beginning inventory beginning inventory sales 30,000 uh, sales 30,000 beginning inventory not 5,000 let us take 3,000 uh, purchases same 20,000 Uh, ending inventory ending inventory is 8000 let me take same amount 8000 now cost of goods sold will be 3 plus 20 minus 8 15000 15000 and uh, gross profit is going to be gross profit is going to be 15000 it was 13000 now it is 15000 okay so in this case what I, what is happening if beginning inventory is undervalued beginning inventory is undervalued gross profit will increase okay likewise if you overvalue it it is not it is not 5000 it is now say for example uh, 7000 beginning inventory 7000 sales remain 30000 uh, purchases that 20000 purchases 20000 So let us take the previous example. We have sales 30,000, um, beginning inventory uh, 5,000, purchases 20,000, ending inventory 8,000. This is the original data. 17,000 is the cost of goods sold therefore the gross profit is $13,000 cost of goods sold now beginning inventory is overvalued beginning inventory we are working on beginning inventory okay beginning inventory is overvalued as 7000 not 5000 rest all same sales 30000 purchases 20000 ending inventory is 8000 so cost of goods sold is going to be 27 minus 8 19000 so you will get a gross profit of 11000 so this kind of calculations you need to know with the help of a formula beginning plus purchases beginning inventory plus purchase minus ending inventory equals to cost of goods sold cost of goods sold minus uh, sales minus cost of goods sold will give you gross profit
based on ending uh, effect of the inventory uh, effect of inventory errors um, you will have one question so inventory errors will have an impact impact on the income statement and balance sheet as well so let me show you here understated if ending inventory is understated cost of goods sold will be overstated net income will be understated likewise retain earnings gross profit retain earnings and equity will also be understated so effect on balance sheet inventory will be understated under current assets retain earnings will also be understated equity will be understated what happens if it is ending inventory is overstated cost of goods sold understated net income overstated inventory overstated current asset will be higher and retain earnings will also be higher the contra to this is beginning inventory likewise you if you have any you know errors in the beginning inventory ending inventory okay you will have impact on cost of goods sold net income retain earnings of course on the balance sheet as well okay if it is there in the in beginning inventory um, the beginning inventory will not have current year balance sheet will not have any impact on the current year balance sheet but it already reflected in the beginning balance sheet which is a last year balance sheet okay current year retain earnings will have an impact and cost of goods sold as well now here what costs are included in the case of manufacturing industry you have different types of expenses until you reach receive the final goods like you purchased a material you purchased a material say for example we are we are manufacturing leather bags so we need to buy you know um, leather zip etc that we call it as direct material then we need laborers to cut them as the per the patterns okay and stitch them to whom what you pay the wage is called direct labor and we need a place to accommodate these two operations to be carried out to convert material into a product that is called factory overhead factory overhead or manufacturing overhead which includes factory rent electricity water insurance depreciation repairs maintenance etc all these three costs are incurred to produce the goods therefore it is called product cost product cost or inventoryable cost this is assigned to inventory say for example you spent you spent ten thousand dollars on these three amounts and you received say 100 bags 100 bags okay so 100 bags each cost of each bag cost is say 100 dollars here this is the reason why it is called as inventoryable cost product cost is also known as inventoryable cost inventoryable cost becomes cost of goods sold when the products are sold or else if uh, as on reporting date if the inventory is not sold it will become ending inventory this is the advantage of the calculation of product cost why because entire product cost does not go to income statement it will ask you a question sold or not sold sold becomes cost of goods sold and will be uh, charge to sales on the income statement no, unsold it will go to balance sheet and shown as ending inventory okay it is the total of direct material direct labor and manufacturing over it whereas period cost period cost are non manufacturing costs non inventoryable cost nowhere included in the in inventory whether the goods are sold or unsold will be charged to income statement these amounts include administration charges administration expenses selling expenses 
and distribution expenses even abnormal loss of goods production goods etc so 100% of these amounts will go to income statement they do not ask any question whether the goods are sold or not say you produced you produced 100 units okay but sold 50 units only remaining 50 units are there in the closing stock so this ten thousand dollars five thousand dollars will become cost of goods sold and remaining five thousand will become ending inventory because you sold only half of the goods produced and say for example you spent two thousand dollars on admin selling and distribution etc all the amount not 50 percent entire two thousand dollars will go to income statement this is the major difference between a product cost and period cost product cost that is the reason why it is called inventoryable cost because uh, if the goods are not sold it becomes automatically a ending inventory okay so period cost it does not check whether the goods are sold or not it directly goes to the income statement okay right inventory cost flow methods inventory cost flow methods are used for the movement of goods from the purchase area to either production or sales see goods are in your warehouse now now you have to sell them off you have to sell them off you have to send them to the showrooms or your company is a manufacturing company these are the materials this will be transferred to the factory now when we have the goods in our warehouse stored and purchased on different dates okay which product is to be distributed to the center let us assume that we are working for a manufacturing company we have material in our warehouse we have material in warehouse we purchased on 1st of january we purchased on 3rd of january we are storing in a uh, date wise 4th of january so material is stored here now we want uh, them to be transferred to our production department this is our factory we have to transfer the goods to the product uh, material to the production department okay so factory requires raw material right now which material is to be issued is an issue whether from this lot from this lot or from this lot this was purchased four days ago this was purchased three days ago this was purchased yesterday so which material is to be showed this is explained using a cost flow method so we need to have a, a, a method to be defined in our policies that which method is to be used okay whether we should use the material which is received first to the production or which is received last to the production first to the production in that case what happens is the material which you received just now the material which is which is received just now will be still there but the material which you received first will be issued first then later on will issue from here then later on will issue from here okay this is called first in first out method first in first out method FIFO method okay if the products are of deteriorated nature means they exp they get expired they cannot be stored for longer period then obviously you need to use first in first out method sometimes the companies may use the last in first out method last in first out the fourth the received the goods which are received on fourth will be issued first okay so we'll study here specific identification method average cost method fifo method and lifo method these methods are uh, used practically in many companies so you meet please um, study and understand well 
and even asked in uh, essay question these days so try to find out that how best we can uh, you know use these methods weighted average cost method okay FIFO method LIFO method or we uh, specify a particular price we specify a particular price a specific identification method tells us that this is a price to be applied this is a material to be received this is a material to be issued we'll dis discuss in detail like first in first out the material which is received first will be issued first this is the beginning inventory okay you can see the orange colored goods which are there here goods are available for sale or for production so what we do is we issue this material first this this one if this is not enough okay still we need from this lot we issued some more material and from this here some goods are issued and some goods are still there in ending this this gives you first in first out because this was there first in our company in our warehouse that is issued first whereas last in first out says this is a beginning inventory this is a recently purchased inventory okay beginning inventory is here recently purchased inventory is here because we are using lost in first out method the recently purchased we should will be issued here if this is not enough for the production we may touch this one as well see a portion of this material which is received first is issued here and if any thing still are there it will be from here lost in first out recently received material will be issued first weighted average method we don't consider which one is received last which one is received first then we combine entire material and issue entire material like this you can find out the colors this is a concept of weighted average method most of the companies like to use weighted average method unless the goods you know spoil get spoiled if you store there for long period they have expiry period etc we use weighted average method otherwise we use first in first out method specific identification method specific identification method says that we need to you know track of cost of each specific goods so that what happens is we just calculate cost of goods sold for the goods only what we issued so we do not follow we do not follow a particular you know flow what we do is we identify that which goods are used in the present production or sales then those goods at what price we purchase for at what price we purchase for say for example we have some goods which are purchased for five dollars we have some goods lying here which were purchased at 5.2 uh, some goods are there which are purchased at 5.8 now we are issuing to the production so which uh, goods are to be issued based on the present conditions that you need to have a track of it okay whether your market prices are going up or falling down falling down you will use this one so that your cost of production will be less market is too heavy customers are ready to buy then you issue high priced material it is a tedious job it is a tedious job and it is costly also to for the movement of the goods verification inspection etc so most of the companies do not like to have this method it's only you need to manipulate based on the what market conditions there's no specific calculation for this we decide that yes issue this material please because market is picking up so the cost of goods sold can be higher when you issue this material to the production yeah average cost method does not consider any kind of specific rules in the you know the met, uh, inventory moment we just mix all uh, the inventory calculate the average price calculate the average price and we issue the material to the production okay so we do not follow any kind of you know uh, method there or specification at all just mix all the goods and you know uh, uh, find out the price moving average method moving average method is used under perpetual inventory system where you will have a complete record of the material when purchased at what rate purchased etc 
and we have a, a complete record of this inventory whereas weighted moving average method is used in periodic inventory system moving average will tell you that which all the material issued this average will take then say we issued this material this average will be taken into account we issued this material this average will be taken weighted moving average is just nothing total value of the goods purchased on different dates divided by total quantity will give you weighted average price we do not consider this movement wise okay weighted moving average method is used in the periodic inventory system moving average method is on the perpetual inventory system see there is a flaw in a, a periodic inventory system when we use weighted moving average say this is the history for entire one month this has been already issued in the first week of the month still it is there in the in average calculation whereas moving average says if this is the inventory this inventory was there in the first week okay only in the first week we calculated average and we left this calculation we don't increase this price and all from second week onwards we we sold this inventory in the second week average calculation average price will be derived by taking only this information third week we take only this information but here it is not like that for entire period total dollar amount divided by total quantity so it doesn't give you a proper information it gives you information overall not you know perpetual there's a flaw in periodic inventory system under fifo or first in first out method the material which is received first will be issued first so in this what we do is like uh, when the material is issued as per first in first out method this is dollar 2 this is dollar 2.2 2.2 say dollar 2.3 we issue this material first okay this material is still there with us what i mean to say is the ending inventory which is with us is at current market prices the historical inventory is already been issued the ending inventory which is still with us is at current market prices this is an advantage of fifo method okay under lifo method we issue material from the last purchased like we purchased at 2.2 a month ago last week we purchased at 2.3 okay this week we purchased at 2.4 we are issuing from here and ending inventory will be with the historical information but advantage here is that our the material which is issued directly will go in which is recently purchased will be directly going to cost of goods sold so recent cost will be reflected in cost of goods sold recent cost will be reflected in cost of goods sold so this is a good method to to, to tr have track of cost of goods sold and gross profit whereas in the case of lifo method uh, what happens here uh, we are taking the historical prices so you will gross profit will have ups and downs and and in the case of uh, you know falling and rising prices falling and rising prices so in the case of rising prices like this 2.2 2.3 2.4 your cost of goods sold will be at a higher price and you will have still inventory with you at lowest price it's an advantage but in the falling prices it will be a disadvantage and one important point you should know that lifo method is not allowed by ifrs it is not allowed by ifrs we are not supposed to use this it is only for internal purpose gap allows but ifrs does not allow this method okay lifo is not permitted under ifrs okay so inventory flow methods we understood now first in first out last in first out and average cost next 
moving average moving average as we discussed that it is in a perpetual basis it will go on and maintains an inventory um, rates and their particular prices etc then uh, we'll take up one uh, example on FIFO method first in first out let me explain you that this is the information we have okay this is the information we have for the you know issue of the material to the sales we purchased 100 units at 20 80 units at 21 and 100 units at 22 on different dates at different prices so total we have 280 units available for sale whose cost is 5880 now say for example we sold 150 units we sold 150 units um, still 130 units will be there in our inventory so we counted that 150 oh we counted that 150 units are hand hand so 130 units are sold so ending inventory is 150 and uh, the inventory sold is 130 now if you use FIFO method first in first out so this 130 units are to be sold 100 units are to be sold okay and 30 units are to be sold from here so you have 50 units of 80 this lot and 100 units here so this 150 this 150 will match now let me show you the calculations so this units were sold out of 130 this units were sold okay Then this from 80 units, we sold how many units? 30 units. 50 units are left. Okay. So completely all these units are sold. And on January 10th, we had 80 units. Out of 80, we sold 30 units of 80. And remaining 50 units are there in the uh, inventory. 50 units valued at 21. 21 are there in your books at 1050 and uh, 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 100 units are not touched at all at the rate of 22 is 2200 so your ending inventory is 3250 okay and we need to calculate cost of goods sold as well say for example uh, how many units are sold here how many units are sold here 100 units at what price 20 no the cost not sale value cost of this 100 units is 20 each so two thousand dollars and out of 80 how many units are sold 30 units at 21 so it is 630 so the cost of goods sold is 2630 okay if this 130 units are sold at the rate of 30 30 dollars okay what is the amount of sale 3900 what is the cost of goods sold 2630 so the gross profit will be 1270 so what i mean to say is whether you use fifo method lifo method weighted average method whatever the method you use you should be able to calculate three components one what is the ending inventory two what is the cost of goods sold three if the selling price is given if the selling price is given what is the gross profit so be ready to answer these questions three questions ending inventory cost of goods sold and if selling price is given the gross profit under three methods three calculations under three methods you have to be familiar with these please now we understand that the um, 130 units are sold whose cost of goods sold also i showed you just now with the numbers and the ending inventory is this now i'll show you the cost of goods sold okay cost of goods sold is 2630 if these units are sold at $30 each 130 units if this 
130 units sold 130 units sold value per unit is 30 dollars it will be 3900 minus cost of goods sold 2630 will give you gross profit sales minus cost of goods sold will give you gross profit 1270 so you must be able to calculate the ending inventory cost of goods sold and also gross profit under each method this way just i explained you just now 100 units at 20 2000 okay this is going to cost of goods sold from 80 units 21 1680 is the value but only 30 units are sold so it is going to 630 the 630 2630 is the cost of goods sold then 21 is still with us okay 50 units at 21 uh, 30 100 units at 20 so if asked in mcq this is a way you need to find out okay so just scribble it and find out whatever the question you ask whether cost of goods sold or gross profit uh, cost of goods sold or ending inventory okay fifo advantages okay it is very easy to understand easy to operate because first in first out even people who are in the you know inventory management can understand this easily and uh, if there is no you know uh, uh, you know manipulation okay if you are fairly using the prices it is too good and also when the prices are falling when the prices are falling in a falling prices the the first in first out you are safe why because you are issuing the material which is purchased first at a higher prices and it is a becoming part of cost of goods sold the inventory which is still with you is at a lower prices so it's good for us that inventory is safe with the lower prices okay and uh, it is very useful for you know the bulky materials with your high unit prices because of the uh, the the first in first out method says this this material this is meti this material will go faster into the production or sales and especially for any deterioration okay and obsolescence this product becomes outdated if you store for long period and uh, or else it will get damaged if you store it for some long period therefore what you need to do is you need to use FIFO method so that this will not become outdated or spoiled and uh, one great advantage is that uh, uh, the FIFO method reflects reflects the the ending inventory reflects at the current market prices these are the prices which you recently purchased which is still with you so your ending inventory will be at current market prices it's a great advantage but disadvantage is that um, um, if you purchase in lots okay it, it doesn't help you okay lots lots means like this not bulky okay because you will have lots of tedious job uh, first in first out you have to trace it out what was received first current costs okay current cost revenues so you are issuing the last last month purchased goods now so the cost of goods sold doesn't match with the current prices that's a disadvantage when the prices are rising your cost of goods sold is not reflected with the recently priced recently purchased goods but you will be say for example five dollars six dollars eight dollars prices are rising this was 100 units this was 200 units and this is say for example 150 units when you are issuing say 250 units you are issuing from the lowest prices you purchased long back but at highest purchase units still with you it's danger because the this highest purchase price price units are still with you if the prices fall next period uh, this will incur you know this will it will incur loss because you have the inventory at higher prices and the fifo method overstates profit in the case of inflation why because your your cost of goods sold is less you are issuing fifo method 
so if the cost of goods sold is less like this your profit is higher unnecessarily you'll have to pay taxes just due to inflation by using a fifo method lifo is just opposite to the fifo method we issue material from the bottom like recently purchased 100 units we purchased it 5 200 units we purchased it 6 150 units we purchased it 7 so we issue material from here first say we issue 250 material 250 units of material 150 will go full and remaining 100 will go from here we issue from bottom recently purchased goods are issued first okay but one thing you need to know that it is not allowed under uh, ifrs lifo method does not allow uh, is not allowed under uh, ifrs does not allow lifo method okay now let us take a small example here the same question we purchased we purchased 280 units uh, during january we found 150 units still there in the closing stock so 130 units are sold 130 units are sold the total cost of 280 units is 5880 but we sold say 130 units how it is to be issued last in first out right last in first out you should observe the flow like this from bottom okay now let me show you from 100 units say 130 units you need to consider from 100 units we sold 100 units from 80 units from 80 units we are selling 30 units and still 50 units will be there in the ending inventory so 30 of 80 units are sold we have still 50 units at 21 and 100 units not touched at all so our in ending inventory value will be 3050 how 3050 this 2000 plus 1050 this is the ending inventory if you want to calculate cost of goods sold remember what was the value of it what was the value of it ah, 21 you can calculate 30 units are sold from this lot at 21 that is 630 and this 100 units were sold whose cost was 22 2, 200. so here it is 2830 is the cost of goods sold 2000 2830 2830 is the cost of goods sold it is calculated like this 2830 and if these units are sold for say um, 130 units are sold at the rate of $30 it is going to be 3900 and what is the cost of goods sold 2830 now 1170 is the gross profit so in the case of rising prices 1 20 21 22 remember here the prices 20 21 22 this is an inflatory market okay in the case of inflationary market what happens for cost of goods sold and you know uh, the gross profit that we'll see in the next session i hope you understand we'll see in the next session uh, and we'll discuss about reco of fifo leaf under rising prices and falling prices also we'll discuss about uh, uh, weighted average cost weighted average method along with the lcm